I'm not always good at, perfect, not always great at remembering that. Um, and with that, I will go ahead and welcome Ellie Williams to the screen. Ellie, you can go ahead and um, unmute yourself and put your video on. Perfect. I'm gonna spotlight you for everybody and quiet myself. And it's all yours, Ellie. Okay, thank you so much, Christina. And, and thanks for having me this evening. Um, I really have a real passion about educating people uh, when it comes to Medicare because making decisions for your Medicare is, is, is a big deal. Um, and it's not a one size fits all. And like you said, I work for the State Health Insurance Assistance Program. And um, one of the things that, that people don't realize is the State Health Insurance Assistance Program is uh, funded by the federal government, the Administration for Community Living, um, because they realized that there, there was a need for people with Medicare to get help at the local level. A lot of folks don't realize it, but when you call 1-800-MEDICARE, you're not actually talking to a Medicare employee you're actually talking to a contractor who, if they cannot solve your situation or answer your question from their script that they actually type in your question, they actually will refer you back to someone like myself at the local level. They'll ask you what your zip code is and then give you the information to your local SHIP program. Um, and this is a nationwide program. They, they do have different names in different states, um, but they're actually doing a rebranding this year um, if anyone has any relatives in Florida, they might have heard them reference Shine, um, but Shine is the same thing as SHIP, and after uh, 2022, we will be known as SHIP across the entire United States. Um, we also do the Senior Medicare Patrol, which is basically um, just helping seniors and caregivers and family members of those who have Medicare to help um, detect and report and prevent fraud, waste, and abuse. Uh, we also have a big emphasis on scams. And as you all know, there's been quite a number of scams uh, you may have heard of or even have had calls from or emails from in regards to something as simple as COVID. You, you have a, a new situation come up and the scam artists are always right on top. So we're here for you to reach out to us for help with any of those things, whether you need help with your Medicare, um, whether you have questions about your Medicare or questions about fraud, waste, or abuse, you can certainly contact us and we will help you navigate these very complicated systems. Um, I know that uh, one of the, the focuses right now is coming up is open enrollment and um, I was, I was speaking with Christina about this because I would love to be able to give you all, all of the, the new numbers. Um, and um, we do not, even myself, we will not have access to the new numbers um, uh, for anything with Medicare uh, until October um, when open enrollment starts. So I'm just gonna go over some of the basics tonight um, and also the importance of the annual open enrollment periods and what you can do during those open enrollment periods. Um, I believe Christina probably sent everyone a PowerPoint. I am not someone who likes to share a PowerPoint or read from the PowerPoint, but if you have it, you're certainly welcome to follow along. Um, Medicare basically has uh, four components. Um, and there's different ways to get your Medicare. Uh, the two main, main components of Medicare is your Medicare Part A, which is your hospitalization that covers inpatient stays, skilled nursing facility rehab, hospice, and very limited home health care. In most cases, folks will get Medicare Part A premium free uh, as long as they have had at least 10 years of Medicare covered employment or their spouse has had at least 10 years of Medicare covered employment. Medicare Part B is the medical and that covers your doctor's services, outpatient care, limited home health care, durable medical equipment, um, hos uh, hospital beds, wheelchairs, walkers, um, even insulin pumps is considered durable medical equipment. And the Medicare Part B, the medical portion of Medicare, will actually also cover the medications that are administered through durable medical equipment. 
A lot of folks have a, get that confused sometimes because they think it's a prescription that I picked up at the pharmacy and my Part D is not covering it. That is actually covered under Medicare Part B if it is used with durable medical equipment. So again, like I said, insulin pumps, the insulin that goes in an insulin pump is covered through B. Um, if someone has a nebulizer, the um, medication that goes in the nebulizer is covered through Part B. So your Part B medical does cover a, a wide variety of things. And these two parts of Medicare are, you, you basically have to have these two parts of Medicare. Um, you, you can certainly forego those, but then you would face a, a penalty for the Part B in the future when you did try to enroll. Um, and there's a lot of times where you can actually delay the Part B, even though you are entitled to it um, without a penalty. But I always like to tell folks before you make any decision whether to delay or take your Part B, you definitely wanna look into it with, with someone just to make sure that you're not going to face a late enrollment penalty later on. Now the premium for the Medicare Part B this calendar year 2021 is 14850. That will probably go up, uh, especially uh, if we see a little bit of a COLA increase. Generally, if you see the Social Security COLA increase, you will see a slight increase for the Medicare B premium as well. Um, the Medicare Part C is Medicare Advantage Plan. And this is another way that people can choose to get their Medicare benefits. And these are actually, um, it's a managed healthcare organization that uh, usually consists of an HMO or a PPO. And I will tell you all the ones that are available in Frederick County are HMOs or PPOs. Um, they are approved by Medicare and they are provided through a private insurance company that has a contract with Medicare. These plans vary from year to year. Um, I will say that there have been a number of companies in Frederick County that have been consistent uh, for the last several years. Um, this year, Blue Cross Blue Shield actually added two plans for, to Frederick County for the first time. Um, these particular plans you can look into and change, and, and I'm gonna go into some specifics about those a little bit later on. Uh, Medicare Part D is your prescription coverage. That is the other requirement um, with, when it comes to Medicare. One is required to have prescription coverage. Now that doesn't mean you have to have Medicare Part D because there's a lot of times where I don't recommend someone get Part D. Um, if someone has uh, prescription benefits through the Veterans Administration, they can forego Part D. Uh, if someone has retirement benefits that include prescription coverage, they can also forego Part D. Um, you could then eventually enroll into D if you chose to and you wouldn't have a late enrollment penalty. But most of the time, if you have retirement benefits that include prescription coverage, in most cases, the uh, retirement drug coverage uh, is usually better than what Medicare Part D can offer. Uh, one of the things, um, hopefully uh, this may ring a bell, you may have heard of what's called the donut hole and the donut hole when Medicare D first started in 2006 was quite a big deal. It, uh, when someone went into the donut hole, uh, they actually had to start paying 100% of their medications, their name brand medications at that point. When the healthcare reform was uh, approved back in 2010, the uh, donut hole was um, slated to go away by 2020. And I will say each year they have reduced the amount that a beneficiary pays while they're in the donut hole. However, the donut hole really didn't go away in 2020. They just kind of changed the name. Now it's known as the gap in coverage. So, um, folks who have retirement benefits will not normally experience a gap in coverage, uh, whereas folks who have just Medicare Part D prescription coverage, depending on their medications and how much they spend in a calendar year, uh, it is you know, possible that they would go into the donut hole or now, aka the, the gap in coverage. I will say... Um, 
most of the folks who are on any kind of injectable insulins, any kind of inhalers, um, those types of things, not rescue inhalers, but inhalers for COPD and other lung, lung diseases, uh, most folks on those types of medications will go into the donut hole every year and or the gap in coverage. And that is one of the reasons why I say that if someone does have access to retirement prescription benefits, uh, you're better off staying with those and not taking the Medicare Part D. But by having Medicare A, B, and your prescription coverage through your retirement benefits and or the VA, you do fulfill the requirements of having insurance. Um, so one of the things that I like to point out is a lot of times, especially uh, someone who may get a little bit confused or you know, they, someone that may start taking care of a loved one um, and they're coming in kind of at the tail end and, and the loved one had actually um, taken care of all the Medicare and, the, and, and all of the benefits prior to that, they may not necessarily know what they have. Um, and I have had so many uh, caregivers and family members say to me, well, I don't see Part D on my mom or my dad or my grandparents' Medicare card. Part C and D would never be reflected on a Medicare card because they do, those cards will come from a private insurance company. And that is why they're never reflected on the Medicare card. Medicare annual open enrollment starts every October 15th and runs through December 7th. During this time, if you have never signed up for a plan and you've had Medicare for a while, you could then sign up for a plan. Um, you can switch your plan. You can, you can look at the various plans that are available to you and you can certainly uh, change from one plan to another during this time. You could also disenroll from coverage. Um, I like to bring that up because uh, a lot of times folks will uh, take Medicare because they have lost employment that, that included coverage, but they plan on going back to work. And then when they go back to work, they realize, okay, well, I I'm paying for this Medicare Part D. I don't need this because now I have coverage through my employer you can actually disenroll from a plan um, during open enrollment as well. Um, any changes that you do make between October 15th and December 7th will actually be effective on January 1st of the following year. So this year, when, when someone would potentially make a change, um, even if they make it um, you know, October 15th, it still would not take effect until January 1st of 2022. Medicare Advantage plans also have a special um, time that you can uh, change your enrollment. That You can do the Medicare Advantage plans during the regular open enrollment, October 15th through December 7th, but you can also, um, if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, you can uh, review those. You can switch from one Advantage plan to another. You could disenroll from an Advantage plan and go back to traditional Medicare with a standalone prescription drug plan from uh, January 1st through March 31st. So if someone has an Advantage plan, they actually have um, a longer period of time to actually review and make some changes. Now, um, if someone has never had an Advantage plan during the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period, they cannot enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan for the first time. Um, you can do that during the regular open enrollment period, which is the October 15th through December 7th. Um, and that's why I say it's really important to pay attention to these different enrollment periods based on your coverage. And it's also very important that you take the time to look at your coverage or review the family member's coverage. Um, the drug plans change from year to year. They can change their formulary. They can change their uh, deductible. They can change their premium. They can actually even stop covering a medication. And a lot of times I've had folks who 
they have enrolled, they enrolled in a drug plan when they first became eligible for Medicare and they never reviewed their plan. And for some reason they decided to review their plan and come to find out had they reviewed their plan the years before, they could have saved potentially hundreds of dollars. Um, I remember one very specific case uh, of a dear couple um, they were in their 80s and they had enrolled in um, the Medicare Part D in 2006 when it first started. And they had both enrolled in the same exact plan and they, they both were spending quite a bit of money on this plan. And I remember when they came in to me for the first time to look at their plan because they were starting to really have a hard time affording it. Neither one of these folks needed to be in this plan and both of them together between the two of them, when we changed their plan and everything, they literally were going to save well over $1,200 a year each. And, and that's why I say uh, it, it generally only takes about 30 to 45 minutes to review your coverage every year. And I can tell you, it's probably one of the biggest things that people find out they can then save money by just reviewing their coverage and maybe making a slight change from year to year. And it's really not something that's real difficult to do. Um, we are here to help folks do the, uh, review their plans and make changes. And we are also, um, you can watch for uh, different uh, things coming up through our virtual senior center we're going to actually have several do-it-yourself uh, Medicare D drug plan review uh, this year so that we can actually walk folks through the steps of doing their own. Um, and even then, you know, I, if I've had people last year that when they did that, they would send their synopsis to me via email and they'd say, hey, here's what I came up with. Can you just take a look at this and tell me what you think? And, you know, sometimes they, they were spot on and they did a really good job, or I would have, if, if not, I would have said, hey, maybe you ought to take a look at this plan. This actually would save you an additional, you know, four or $500. And it really does make a big difference to really take the time and review your coverage from year to year. It is, it is one of the ways that, that a lot of folks can potentially save some money. Um, one of the things that I like to also talk about is the special enrollment period. Um, I told you the uh, annual open enrollment is October 15th through December 7th for, for drug plans and enrolling in an Advantage plan for the first time if you didn't and you would like to. And then the Medicare, open, uh, Medicare Advantage open enrollment, which is January 1 through March 31st. There's also other times that someone may qualify for special enrollment periods outside of the annual open enrollment periods. Uh, if someone enrolls in a plan and they move, they change where they live. And by, by saying that, you can be moving from another state um, to this state or move out of this state to another state. You could actually move from the community into a facility. All of those things would give you what's called a special enrollment period to review your coverage um, for your, your new place that you're living um, and make any changes necessary. Uh, also, if someone loses their current coverage, um, if, if you have retirement benefits and this has happened in the past where the retirement benefits actually end, um, you lose your coverage through no fault of your own, then you do actually qualify for another special enrollment period. Or um, if you have employer insurance and your employer insurance ends um, or your employment ends, you, you qualify for that as well. Um, if, again, like I said, if you do have the opportunity, you get Medicare and you decide you don't want to keep the Medicare because you've went back to work and you have really good employer benefits again, that does give you a special enrollment period where you can opt out of some of the Medicare options um, as well. And if a plan changes their contract with Medicare, whether it's a Medicare Advantage plan or one of the Medicare Part D prescription plans, you can actually um, change your plan at that time as well. I will say that most of the time the contract changes do fall uh, during the open enrollment. So that one's not been as big of a deal. 
Um, you are notified if your plan is going to be ending. Um, but I will tell you in my almost 18 years, I've never seen a plan end mid-year. It's always been um, based on the calendar year. Um, but if something were to happen, you would you would not be without coverage. You would be able to go ahead and enroll in a, a different coverage option. Um, also, the other thing is if you become eligible for a subsidy program, and I talk to folks all the time that'll say, well, you know, I have social security, my husband has social security and we have a small pension, so we probably don't qualify for anything. Um, there are a number of uh, programs out there. There's some federal programs that are based on income and assets. Um, and there's actually a state program that is uh, based only on income. And a lot of times folks are very surprised because the income limits are pretty high for the state subsidy program that is only based on income and not assets. So I always tell folks, you know, rather than just assume that you're not eligible for a program, it might be a good idea to get screened. Um, and you can certainly get screened through our agency, um, either via myself or one of our other service navigators at our agency could screen you to see if you're eligible for any programs. And I actually have a little table um, that was included in the PowerPoint, and I'm not going to go over this line by line, but when you do have an opportunity, you can actually look at the last page of my little PowerPoint. And I did actually put the most current income and asset guidelines for all of the different programs. I even actually added uh, the energy assistance. Um, and one of the things that changed drastically with energy assistance this year is the income limit went up a good bit for households that have someone who is 67 years old or older in their household. Um, so even if you applied for energy assistance in the past or were screened in the past and you didn't qualify because uh, your income was just a little too high, you may wanna have someone revisit that for you because like I said, they did, uh, they did change that for folks who are 67 or older um, that are living in the household. Um, so that is actually uh, the, the nuts and bolts of the, the basics of open enrollment and what you can do and, and the dates and everything and the importance behind doing it. Um, and I am certainly open to taking any questions that anyone would have. Uh, I know uh, the folks that are running the show behind the scenes, they told me that they would uh, make sure and let me know of any questions that someone may have. Yeah. Ellie, thank you so much. So much information. I, it, it can be really overwhelming. Um, folks, if you have any questions for Ellie, please put them into the chat box or to the Q&A box uh, and we will get those to her. Ellie, you said at the outset, this is Medicare is federal, right? So if my mom lives in Massachusetts and I'm trying to manage things, the information you're sharing tonight applies to her in Massachusetts, correct? Yeah, the overall information as far as the parts of Medicare and the enroll open enrollment dates, yes, that is, that is across the board. That is across the states. The income limits for subsidy programs vary state by state. And the options um, as far as Medicare Advantage plans vary by zip code. For instance, in Frederick County, depending on your zip code, you may or may not be eligible to enroll in every Medicare Advantage plan. So someone in Massachusetts, they would have Advantage plans there, but their, their options would be different than what the options are for folks here. And, and again, like I said, it is very zip code specific. The prescription benefits are state specific. So as far as the prescription coverage goes, if someone is living in zip code 21702 in Frederick or someone is living in zip code uh, 21769 in Middletown, the, the, benef the prescription options are going to be exactly the same. So someone in Massachusetts, they would have the same exact um, prescription uh, benefits available all over the state but they would probably be different than the state of Maryland. Gotcha. 
So, and, and just to add on to that, Christina, um, Humana, uh, WellCare, AARP, some of those companies, they are nationwide. However, the prescription plan number for the state of Maryland under, say, uh, WellCare Wellness, that same exact plan may not be available in Massachusetts or in another state. So it could be under the same company, but it would be a different, perhaps a different plan name and definitely a different plan number because again, they're very state specific. Got it, thank you. Um, Ellie, what happens if somebody misses, oh, let me ask you this. What happens if somebody misses open enrollment? If they want to get their drug plan reviewed and they missed open enrollment, I think the best thing for them to do would be to contact our office to find out if they're eligible for one of the subsidy programs. Because if, they, if we can screen them and get them approved for one of the subsidy programs, upon the approval of the subsidy program, they can, we can still then make changes to their coverage outside of open enrollment. Okay, here's a question, Ellie. Uh, the gentleman has a Medicare supplemental insurance that covers the 20%. Do the Advantage plans really cover large medical costs? For example, he's taking a leukemia drug that costs $8,000, so his 20% is 2,000. Um, he also wonders if there is a lifetime cap on Medicare payments. So two different questions there. Okay, so to address the first one, Medicare Advantage plans, they have a cap on your total out-of-pocket per year, uh, whereas traditional Medicare and supplements don't have a cap on your total out-of-pocket per year. The cost sharing, however, is much different with Advantage plans than it is with having a supplement. Um, the, the, the pros and cons, if you will, the pro of a supplement is if, if your 20% is $2,000, then your supplement plan is going to cover that uh, versus the Medicare Advantage plans. If your it, it doesn't go by 20%, if your uh, cost sharing amount for whatever service or, or drug you would be responsible for whatever that may be. Um, and that's why the, that's kind of the con of the Medicare Advantage plan. The pro is it's a lot cheaper than supplements most of the time, but as a whole, um, if someone has a lot of healthcare costs and if someone is on expensive, um, you know, procedures or treatments, anything like that, your supplement plan is actually going to cover more of that cost sharing than a Medicare Advantage plan would. And Ellie, do the Medicare Advantage plans, like do they have to publish what that cost sharing is ahead of time? Do you know going in? I guess you only know if you take that drug now, you don't necessarily know what your doctor's gonna order in six months, but do they publish that information so you can yeah, make a decision? Yeah, that, that is also, that is also, you can actually look at that also um, on medicare.gov. Uh, you can actually go in and look at the Advantage plans. You can look at what your, your co-pays would be for your doctors, for your specialists, what your percentage would be, um, say for durable medical equipment. And it does vary greatly by plan, uh, along with what your um, cost for your medications would be. I will tell you, as a whole, the standalone drug plans do provide a little bit better prescription coverage, especially if someone is on costly medications than the Medicare Advantage plans do. And Ellie, once you pick it, you've got that for the year. So if your doctor adds a new drug in, in May you, and it's not covered by the formulary you're under, you're paying that until you can do open enrollment again. Yeah, um, I will tell you this, every uh, Advantage plan and every Medicare D drug plan has what they call medication therapy management team. And that will be pharmacists and physicians and such that are on that team. So if your doctor prescribes you a medication and you find out it's not gonna be covered by your current coverage, you should contact the plan and speak to the medication therapy management team 
and tell them what the, the condition is and why the, what the medication that the doctor prescribed. And they would then give you a list of medications that are comparable that they do cover to take back to your doctor to see if the doctor could then perhaps prescribe one of those. Okay, Ellie, this is really confusing. So I see the great benefit of talking to someone who knows this kind of stuff. If someone's setting up a meeting with you, what should they bring? What can they do to be prepared to make it as easy as possible? Um, I always tell everyone, because I like to do everything at the same time. So if you're setting up a meeting with me, I always like you to have your Medicare card handy, your list of medications with dosage, uh, as well as your, um, your income, and your assets. Um, because even if you just want to check on your benefits, one of the things that I always do is I like to screen everyone for programs all at the same time as well. And Ellie, when can people make appointments with senior services for open enrollment? So starting the first week of October, they can call 301-600-1234 to schedule a um, prescription review or a Medicare Advantage plan review. And Ellie, do those appointments fill up? Is it important for people to call soon, earlier rather than later? Well, I, I will tell you this. Um, last year was totally different because it was totally different for the whole world, obviously. <laughs> um, so we didn't fill up quickly last year. I just think people didn't realize that even though they couldn't meet with us in person, we were still able to do this by phone or virtually. Uh, I do believe that it is going to fill up quicker this year uh, because folks are more aware that the services are still available. And I actually was told by our admin team today that they're already getting calls and she's just instructing them to call back the first week of October when they'll actually have the appointment schedule set up. And Ellie, do you think they'll be in person at all or all virtual or by phone? There will be uh, just a very select handful of in-person appointments available and they will be on a first come first serve basis. Um, I have two uh, one of uh, my ship team members will be providing uh, in-person appointments one day a week, and one of our service navigators will be providing in-person appointments one day a week. Um, I am not 100% sure yet if there's going to be additional uh, staff who are doing it, but the whole schedule will be solidified, like I said, by the first week of October. But if someone does want an in-person appointment, they definitely should call early first week of October and, and, and stress that they would like an in-person appointment. Perfect. Okay. So another question, uh, I want to answer this one first about the PowerPoint being available. So I did email the PowerPoint. It was just minutes before the webinar started. Um, if you did not get that, you can certainly email me back and I will resend it. Um, but that I did send that to everyone who had registered right before we started. So here's a question, Ellie. If someone has Medicare Part A and B, Medicare Supplement F, and Part D, if this person has been hospitalized for 10 days, gone to rehab 20 days, what are the rules if this person has to go back to the hospital and rehab at a later date? So with, with Supplement Plan F, they're actually in pretty good shape. Um, however, a the hospitalization, the Medicare Part A is based on what's called a benefit period. So a benefit period begins the day that you're admitted to the hospital. The benefit period ends 60 days after you have been released from either the hospital or in this case, it sounds like maybe a, a skilled nursing facility rehab for center. So your benefit period would not start again until you're out of both facilities for at least 60 days. Got it. So what happens if somebody does have to go back to the hospital within the 60 days? Does that mean they're not, the hospitalization isn't covered? 
Oh, no, it is. It's covered. It's okay. covered. Yeah, it's covered. Um, and like I said, with plan F and Medicare A and B, you're, you're, you're covered perfectly. Got it. Wow. Again, I will reiterate to this non-Medicare beneficiary yet, this is all really confusing stuff. Most definitely. And, and it's, again, it's not a, it's not a one size fits all. And it's, it's definitely the, the basics of Medicare, like I said, the, the, the components of Medicare and the prices are pretty much standard nationwide. The way you get your benefits, the programs that are available, all of those things can vary. Um, also, the, the cost, depending on you know, where someone lives enrolling in a drug plan or a Medicare Advantage plan can vary. So there's a lot of variables and Unfortunately, I, I've had so many people tell me this, and if, if any of you have ever attempted to read the Medicare and You handbook, it really does not spell out all of this stuff for you. And generally, if you read one section, by the time you get to the next section, it's contradicting the previous section. So that's one of the reasons why I like to really be able to talk to people, answer their specific questions, and um, I, this this program, I believe, is just one of the very beneficial programs um, in Frederick County, really. Um, Ellie, and that uh, raises a question, right? There might be other people hanging out a shingle to say that they can advise you on Medicare. What do people need to be careful about when people are offering help? Number one, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And the reason that I bring that up, I'm sure everyone has seen the commercials that are you getting all of your Medicare benefits? Do you know that you can get the Medicare 148.50 added back to your Social Security check? All of those good things. That is basically the 148.50 going back to somebody's check is a possibility if they qualify for some of the low income, low asset programs through their particular state. That is a possibility, but is it likely for the majority of people? Probably not. Um, the other thing is, is it, it talks about, oh, you can get um, home meal delivery, transportation. There, there are some what we call special needs plans throughout the United States. And they're generally for someone who's duly eligible for Medicaid and Medicare that can get those types of benefits. Um, someone that is just on Medicare to get those free benefits is highly unlikely. And I can tell you, it's not available anywhere in the state of Maryland right now. Ellie, let's go back to the, um, the lifetime benefit. So let's say someone has just been really unhealthy with lots of health issues and surgeries. Is there a lifetime cap benefit with Medicare? Could they get shut off? No. No lifetime cap. So it can just keep going. If someone gets sicker and sicker and sicker, their Medicare, if they have it, is going to continue to cover them. Correct. Excellent. Um, let's see. If you have Medicare Part A, B, and D, and you need nursing home care, when can a Medicaid supplement Medicare or does it? Was the question, when can Medicaid supplement the, Medicare? The question does says, when can Medicaid supplement Medicare or does it? Okay, so if someone enters a skilled nursing facility and they're not expected to return to the community, meaning that their health is not gonna improve, it's just a, gonna decline and they meet a skilled level of care, Medicare stops paying after 100 days. You can only do Medicare for rehab purposes. So if you go into the facility for rehab purposes and you are not getting better, you're actually declining, Medicare will pay nothing towards your stay at day 100. Um, at that point, that would be when you would have to apply for long-term care Medicaid. And that's completely different. That's, um, it, in a sense, it is based on income, but it's, it's, it's totally different income than just regular community Medicaid. And they also do look at assets, but Medicare in of itself does not pay for any part of long-term care, nothing. And Ellie, I just want to clarify that 100 days is not a given. If on day 20 of your rehab, you stop making progress, your Medicare coverage would end there. 
Yeah, they do reevaluate at day 20, yes. All right, I wonder if there are any other questions out there for Ellie. Ellie, this has been a great presentation. So much good information. Folks, I hope that you did have all of your questions answered. Um, again, please check your email. I sent Ellie's contact information and her PowerPoint uh, presentation to you. Uh, the phone number for senior services is included there as well, that 301-600-1234 number. So um, great information, Ellie. I hope that you will hear from our, our attendees uh, soon. I am gonna... Uh, perfect. And here's Ellie's contact information as well. Um, folks, I also want to let you know that we've got our next webinar is scheduled for October 14th. Uh, very excited to have Jeff Titcomb. He is a funeral director uh, for 30 plus years, who's really going to walk us through funeral planning. Um, so questions that you've got or are afraid to ask or things you probably didn't even know you needed to ask. Uh, we really want to break it down and give you a lot of really good information. So that's going to be October 14th from 7 to 8. Um, the uh, link to register is there. I can put that in the chat box as well. Uh, if you are uh, interested in doing that, I just finished setting it up. So it is there uh, and ready for your registration. We look forward to having you. Uh, I hope everybody has a great night and we will see you in October. Okay, Take and care. Christina, I yes. actually put my email in the chat as well. If people have questions that they want to just email me directly, feel free and I will I will respond to their questions via email. Ellie, thank you. Everybody go ahead. You can read in that chat box. You can copy and paste Ellie's contact information or click on the link to register. Thanks again, Ellie. No problem. My pleasure. Okay, we're clear.